Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. I am back from my travels now and as you can see I'm clean shaven and got myself all spruced up ready for another week of work. Um, now it's interesting because I think at this stage in uh, where we are with the things that are going on in the world it is time to really focus not on coming up with the solutions but doing the solutions. Instead of uh, just sitting here and saying, oh, well, we ought to do this and we ought to do that, we need to get on with it. We need to get on with it. We know that life is hard. We've got this new government, and uh, as you can see, I think that's waking up more people left, right and centre with um, Herr Starmer coming in there, trying to uh, go renege, is it? Is that the word? Renege on his uh, promises in the manifesto. People are beginning to go, hold on a minute, why is the government treating us so bad? Now, on this channel, we've of course been discussing why the government and the councils have been treating us so bad. And yet, of course, in a democratic society, we the people ought to be making the decisions and we instruct those that we have asked to carry out these orders to do them and get on with them. But as you have seen, everything's upside down. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who's emailed me whilst I was away. I've got a huge number of emails to plough through. I'm not sure I should get through them all. Um, so I'm sorry if you don't get back to me. Uh, and uh, I just would like to say, you know, I don't want to say don't email me, but please don't send me um, too many emails because, you know, ultimately I just can't keep up with it. Uh, because I want to focus on what I need to do myself and what the lovely Julia and I need to do. And we basically, we want to get a farm. We want to start growing. We know that there's going to be uh, trouble with food. We know that the supermarkets are, of course, selling nutrient-free food, food that's so full of all sorts of nasties. I'm not surprised. I am surprised, rather, that anybody goes to the supermarket at all. And they're not supporting their local farmers by going to farm shops, asking for organic food and trying to get the best food they can. As I mentioned in the last video, we're straight back from a Barbara O'Neill summit, a health summit in which Barbara O'Neill, obviously world famous Barbara, has been uh, giving her health uh, advice and suggestions to uh, a huge number of people at the Hydro um, the Hydro Hotel in Scotland in Creef, the Creef Hydro, I had to get my names correct there. And that interview will be coming up as soon as I get the file that was sent to me, uh, that is being sent to me by uh, the little podcasting studio, video studio that they set up. So as soon as I get that, I'll put that up there. You'll find that really interesting. So Julia and I want to get on farming. We want to have some cows. We want to have some pigs, some chickens, some bees. We want to do that as organically or beyond organic. We don't need to find um, a, you know, one of these official stamps to say we're just going to grow it in the most natural health ways we can. So if anyone's got a farm, they want to <laughs> they want to uh, talk to me about that they need, we're in the market. We've got to try and do something and we want to get on with it and we'll share that journey. In the meantime, for a short while, I'll carry on doing the interviews and things, but rather than just keep saying we've got to do this, we've all got to get off our backsides and get on with it now instead of sitting there and just sort of moaning and groaning about the government or about the WEF or the Satanists. We've got to laugh in their faces and say, do you know what? We're not interested. We're turning our backs on you, turning our backs on the nonsense. If they're not going to do as we say, we'll get on with it and do it ourselves. Now, whilst I was in Scotland, I met up with a chap called Doug and he had a suggestion and I'm not sure that it's 100% right, but it's the starting point of something, maybe. So I thought I'd read that out to you and see what your comments are, comments are and see what you think. So let's have a little look at this. So here's his suggestion and he wants to set up something or has suggested to be set up something called the Sovereignty Group. Now, I know that there's a lot of sovereignty groups and things out there, but he wants to sort of, and everybody does it in their, their own little way of doing things with different, different, um, um, you know, different methods and things. So let's have a look and see what he suggests. So the proposed sovereignty group could be a possible solution to our ongoing government problems, he says. The sovereignty group 
could be a community initiative where members elect a representative who also serves as the chairman. The chairman will regularly arrange meetings with local MPs, the chairman or mayor of the local council, to discuss and advocate for resolutions on behalf of the group members. Now, I'm um, of the opinion, and we know that there is the Monopolies um, Act, which means you can't have a monopoly of businesses. The council, as I've mentioned before, is a business. We ought to have um, competition. So there should be another council. I would like to see a secondary council being built up and people like the Sovereignty Group negotiating with them rather than in the existing corrupt, fraudulent councils that are registered on Dun & Bradstreet that we have today. But that's just my humble opinion. Let's uh, crack on. In a society where many individuals feel disempowered, the Sovereignty Group offers a platform for collective strength. It ensures that there is a unified voice speaking out for the members' sovereign rights. This group is non-political and independent of any legislative associations, providing an open forum for people to express their concerns and aspirations. That sounds all right, doesn't it? I encourage all like-minded individuals to organise gatherings to identify potential representatives from various regions across Great Britain. Let the silent majority, including those who didn't vote, have a chance to be heard. This is an opportunity to voice opinions outside the constraints of the legislative system. And yes, uh, you know, if you didn't vote in this, or even if you did, the chances are you didn't actually vote for the Labour Party, and you didn't vote for Starmer, or you didn't vote for the things that Starmer is um, introducing, having abandoned the manifesto. We know that uh, old age pensioners, for example, are going to be freezing, apparently, because he's taken away the, free, the fuel allowance from the taxpayers' money. You know, if you're paying your taxes and you think, well, actually, old people who've given their... Uh, worth to the country, fought in wars, or our generations uh, down from those people who fought in wars have worked all their life to make sure that the, the world is a nice, safe place and given service and advice to the younger generation. They ought to be, as they reach their older age, um, at least helped by not freezing in their homes. And so any government that's decided we're not going to help people, in fact we're going to hinder them, that's very anti-human. So if you didn't vote, or even if you did vote for the Labour Party, I think that we definitely need to move away from that. And this could be an idea. So let's carry on. Local councils are increasingly constrained by the terms of contract law with the British Parliament. Well, of course, they're businesses and they're trying to implement the great corporate takeover. Instead of people living in the private, having a public authority and being able to engage and actually have the council say things like, well, we'd love to help you, let's find reasons to help you set up your farm, go on the land, create a nice environment. They seem to be just wanting to do whatever the, uh, the top-down people, the WF, the WHO, the uh, Freemasons, the globalists and all of those want to implement the global society. And many of us think, actually, we don't want that, Thank you very much. Um, to carry on, so I think, you know, the councillors are not just constrained, they're actually encouraging the 15-minute cities, the surveillance and everything else. However, consequently, he, Doug goes on, individual rights often go unaddressed. I think they don't want to listen to them at all, to be honest with you. In the light of recent, the recent election, it is imperative to hold the newly elected MPs accountable for their responsibilities to the public. Well, I would definitely be writing to one's MP and just reminding them how democracy works. We make the decisions. You go and tell the government who we've assigned to do the very simple things that we need, the things that we can't individually do, like making sure the roads are clear and things like that, um, that they ought to get on with what we want. By joining the sovereignty group, individuals can ensure their voices are heard and their rights defended. This proposal seeks to work alongside existing groups 
dedicated to empowering the people of Great Britain, aiming to amplify their efforts and hold MPs fully accountable to public rights, with the firm belief that the principles of the sovereignty group cannot be disregard disregarded by the government. The necessity for the proposed group is now essential, he says, particularly when we're entitled to services like the Citizens Advice Bureau. Yes, remember when you could just go to the Citizens Advice Bureau and get some basic advice and now you have to have an appointment? It's a bit like going to the GP, isn't it? You need to book up three or four months in advance, which is uh, not very helpful if you've got a problem and you don't know where to go. Uh, we cannot be denied the necessary alternative opportunity for a rights centre, which should ultimately be available in all villages and towns. Initially, the group will de depend on volunteers to get started, and we trust that all running costs will rely on charitable funding with hopes of securing some form of government grant. And uh, as it says there, that's a suggestion by Doug in Scotland. Well, thank you, Doug, for that. And I think that you know, kind of gets the ball rolling to get us to think that if we could take there's many of these little communities that are setting up lots of sovereignty groups and various things, and it's almost effectively setting up our own parliament, really, our own administration. I don't think these, you know, if we could set up our own administration, like the, uh, as I said at the beginning, with the Monopolies Act, it would be an alternative and uh, if the government, as it is, is a business registered on Dun and Bread Street, then let's set up our own government. Let's get all the members of, from all the shires coming together as a its own little government, much smaller, without so much um, telling of everybody what to do, but implementing the things that people want. And that we turn our backs on the ones that are treasonous and are tyrannical and dictating to us the things that they want us to do and not what we need from a community of sovereign people, basically. So I'd be interested in your thoughts on that. Thank you very much. But for, for me and this channel, we aim in the next few months, it's not going to happen overnight, to start looking for land, to start getting onto the land, as I said, with animals, with uh, cows and pigs and chickens and bees, and, and being part of the solution. We all need to do that. Let's stop the fear. Let's stop acquiescing to the nonsense they're giving us. And let's actually get off our backsides and get going. And that's what I think we need to do. Just my opinion. You may have a different one. And I'd love to read them in the comments. Thank you very much. Till next time. Goodbye.